Hello, my quilting friends. I'm Leah Day, a professional quilter, author, and online teacher. And this podcast is all about quilting, running a creative business, and balancing our busy hands with our busy lives. You can find the episode show notes and links to everything mentioned in this podcast at leahday.com. Enjoy the show. Hello, my quilting friends. Leah Day here with episode 18 of the podcast. And today I have an interview with Jackie Kunkel. She is a quilting superwoman. She does a little bit of everything. She travels and teaches. She designs fabric. She writes quilt patterns. She really does it all. And so we talk a little bit about all of these different things and how she manages it and balances it all. Um, You know, that is a full plate. And it's really fascinating to talk to other people and just see how they keep it all going and don't go crazy, you know, trying to trying to kind of stay ahead. Uh, So I learned a lot from Jackie and I hope that you enjoy our interview. Now for a few updates around the house. Uh, You might have noticed that this podcast came out on Wednesday. I'm playing around with the days to publish again. Uh, While I was working okay on Saturdays, I found that I was ending up working a lot uh, then on the weekends, you know, Saturdays, Sundays, that kind of thing. And I really don't like that. I really want to set my weekends aside for my family and be able to get off the computer and spend more time with them Uh, or to spend more time quilting. You know, the weekend's a really nice time for that too. So when I, you know, I found myself spending a lot of time just with like last minute podcasty kind of stuff on the day that it would come out. And so, you know, I thought about that a lot. And then of course, with Easter falling on the weekend uh, and everything kind of so busy, I was like, well, why would I come out with an interview, you know, especially this awesome interview with Jackie uh, on Easter weekend when no one's going to listen to it? You know, everybody's going to be hanging out with family. So So that made it kind of an easy decision to shift the podcast, try Wednesday out again, and see if I will get my act together maybe Monday, Tuesday of the week uh, to get things edited and uploaded and all of that um, kind of behind the scenes stuff done before the actual data has to come out. That would be good. Uh, You know, it's one of those things. uh, I think that everyone has to find their right day to come out and publish content. You know, for me, videos. Uh, are great to come out on Mondays and Fridays. Like those are great days. Sundays are working really well too for the um, sit down quilting Sunday series I've been working on. Uh, But it's always something to kind of play around with because you never know. And it's like, you know, actually this kind of feels like it's working better. So I hope that you enjoy it too. And you'll be looking forward to the episodes coming out every other Wednesday from now on. So speaking of Easter, it was a super, super fun Easter for us. We had a big family celebration here, you know, got the remodel done just in time. And then I spent another week uh, just cleaning up, just straightening up the house, sorting through things. I purged a lot of dishes. I know that sounds like a weird thing to, to go through and sort through right before a big family gathering, but I realized I had just tons and tons of dishes I was never using. So got rid of a lot of things and cleaned and dusted everything to within an inch of its life. So the whole house feels nice and clean now, which is really good. Uh, And everyone had a great time. And it was just so fun to see all of the kids. My sisters came and brought their kids. And uh, we put on a big scavenger hunt for baskets and then a big Easter egg hunt. Uh, And it was just really fun to see the kids and watch them hunting eggs uh, and then going through the eggs when they felt like they got them all. And I think I think they left a whole lot in the yard. (laughs) So it'll be really interesting to see what happens whenever uh, we mow the lawn again. (laughs) But they would come in and, and go through the eggs and stuff. And Josh had actually packed the eggs. And he loves doing egg hunts, like super, super into it. And instead of just candy, he also included a lot of like little miniatures from uh, Hobby Lobby. I found like the miniature section that had uh, miniature food and groceries and stuff like that. So Josh had so much fun adding in all of these little treats. And it was a huge hit with the kids. We, I had, I had to be really careful. I was like, please understand that not all of the things are edible. You know, like don't try and eat that. <laughs> but uh, they were all old enough that, that no one got confused. And everyone thought it was 
really cool. So that was that was a really good time. And just I pretty much cooked the whole time. And I love that. I find cooking really relaxing. So, you know, I, I set up a kind of cheese and cracker platter and then was working on meats and sides and all that kind of stuff. So I was just basically kind of in the kitchen. And the nice thing is uh, with the remodel, we have the kitchen, the living room, dining room, all of it's open. So I can be in the kitchen, but I can be a part of the conversation in the living room and the dining room too. And so I didn't feel left out or anything. I had a great time. So everyone I think was really happy and uh, we're looking forward to a another fun party maybe sometime this summer. So that'll be good. So I hope that you had a really happy Easter as well. And that was a fun holiday. Um, Easter for me has always been a family holiday. And, you know, we used to go over to my grandma's house when I was a little girl and hunt eggs at her house. And people would come in, like my aunts would come to visit. And so it's always been a big family holiday. Uh, and I'm, I'm just hoping that we can continue that tradition and keep getting together at somebody's house or, you know, maybe rent a house somewhere and kind of everybody show up and have a good time. So, you know, now that the remodel is done, I've been taking a few days to reflect, you know, all that time cleaning. <laughs> I spent a lot of time reflecting just on, you know, really what I want to focus on now and where I want to go and getting back to my word of the year, which was simplify. You know, my, my words for the year were uh, easy and simple, that I wanted to make things easier to do. And then I wanted to simplify down so that I don't feel like I'm being pulled in so many different directions all the time. And, and really, you know, a lot of it, I realized I feel a lot of times very ineffective because I have all these ideas and all these plans and I write them down and then they never get done. Uh, and one thing that really brought this home, uh, part of my whole purging process, I went downstairs and sorry, and just in case purging, it's not, I'm not meaning like throwing up. <laughs> I don't know why that suddenly crossed my mind. Like somebody might be getting the wrong idea here. No, um, I'm cleaning, cleaning and clearing out, like, uh, throwing things away or, or sending it to Goodwill. Um, so that's what I mean by purging. So clearing out, uh, I was downstairs working on my desk in the office and I, I didn't shoot a before picture, although I should have, it was pretty bad. Um, I had stacked up these blue boxes all the way to the ceiling and within them were like different design ideas. So I had an idea, I'd be sitting at the kitchen table, I'd sketch something out and, you know, didn't really have anything to do with that. So I'd throw it in a bin and I'd never go through the bins again. You know, it's pretty much if it's in a box, I consider it kind of stashed away. It's not really something I'm going to look at, go through, deal with again. Uh, and so uh, I started going through all of those and seeing these designs and these sketches and these ideas. And I realized, you know, I was sketching that five years ago and I'm still sketching that idea now. I really ought to go make that quilt. Or I'm making these lists of designs to teach, like in a workshop, and I was doing that four years ago. Maybe I should actually go and make that workshop and teach that thing so I can get it out of my head, you know? Uh, so that was, it was both frustrating and also kind of eye-opening, like, wow, I, I am kind of running five years behind myself, you know, in my head. I've been, I've been doing these things and or sketching these things for five years and not getting them done. And that feels very frustrating. Uh, so going through all of those bins, I had to recognize the fact that um, I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I mean, like not, and maybe not even just a little bit, like I'm a hoarder. I'm not in the like buried alive state <laughs> of hoarding. I, I'm not, you know, in danger of uh, being squashed by all my stuff, but I do spend an extra amount of time um, storing stuff when the stuff is usually the thing I want to do. So instead of doing the thing I want to do, I'm spending time storing the thing I want to do, if that makes sense. And you know, it's crazy making. It really is crazy making. And then the, I, you know, like, okay, well, let's throw this away. That becomes scary then. Like, oh, no, 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 no. One day I might not be creative and I might need that little slip of paper or that little thing um, that will remind me what my creativity is. So there's a lot of fear behind it too, about or behind the saving. And then of course I ran across so many, you know, gadgets and tools and supplies and, um, you know, things that I picked up 
you know, like crafting materials that I've picked up over the years that I've wanted to do something creative with. And then I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And a lot of times I can see that I am buying because buying is easy. You just go to the store and spend some money. Uh, but actually doing something with the, the stuff that you get, that's what takes work. You know, you have to actually sit down and stitch it. You have to actually come up with a project idea. You have to follow through. And that's what I've been lacking. I've been lacking the follow through. So uh, I don't know. I just got really um, real with all of it and, and honest about all of it and ready to recognize that I am I have a hoarding problem as far as hoarding up all of these uh, design ideas and materials and craft supplies and that instead of going out and buying something new, I need to shop my stash and, uh, you know, and shop my craft supplies. So if I want to make something creative and fun, instead of running to Hobby Lobby to go do something like, no, okay, I'm, I'm forced to do this with materials I already own and I can't buy anything new, you know, and that's a challenge. That's really, really hard. It's, it's fun. It's so fun and it feels so good to buy new stuff. And I've gotten into a bad habit of always visiting craft shops and quilt shops when I'm on vacation. And so then it becomes kind of the vacation thing to go and find these shops and, and to go hang out in them. And, and then of course, then to buy stuff. Uh, and then it doesn't feel like a vacation if I don't. So I don't know. I mean, I see other, I see other professional quilters and, you know, and kind of seem to struggle with the same thing. Um, you know, but I think we all have to kind of find our own path with this. And I would get so much more joy, I think, if I actually started using these things that I think are so pretty uh, and using them to make pretty things that I can actually enjoy, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm needing to find more uh, ways to simplify. We did a lot of cleaning and clearing today in the um, cutting room. Uh, this is the room that dad and I kind of share to prep up quilts. We have a really big table in there with a cutting mat that covers the whole surface. And uh, we've been clearing out bins and boxes. And dad's been working with us now for almost three years. And we've been clearing out bins and boxes with projects that, you know, have been in progress for three years, you know, it might've been, you know, the first or second project that, that dad helped me with when he first started working for us. And that's frustrating. Like, wow, you know, clearly that wasn't all that important if I didn't ever get it done, you know, or published or for sale or whatever it was supposed to, whatever was supposed to happen with it. Um, so going through it, we kind of streamlined, um, you know, pulled things out of boxes, made some decisions. I let several projects go just like, Hey, this is not going to happen. If it, if it didn't happen in three years, it's not going to happen now. Uh, and then many of the projects, I now have a list. So it's like, I can see what's there and what's in progress. And, you know, I can start picking like, Hey, I think it's time to do that embroidery project. Or, Hey, I think it's time to do that walking foot project. Or, Hey, I think it's time to do that crazy quilt project. You know, if I have not done the crazy quilt project by December, please email me and yell at me. <laughs> like Leah, do the crazy quilt project, please. I, that has been in progress for such a long time and it's really silly you know these things that we create uh we want to get them finished so we can enjoy them you know so we can get them done and you know if anything so I can give the quilt to someone who would love it so I think that's really what I need to tap into you know creating quilts uh to because I love making quilts but also because they are such a nice thing to give away they're such a nice thing to show someone that you really love them and, you know, getting this stuff finished and out of the house, you know, I have enough quilts. We've got two king size quilts on the bed. You know, James has got like 10 quilts on his bed at any given time. He loves to pile up the quilts on, on, on his bed with all of his stuffed animals. So we got enough quilts ourselves. Now it's time to figure out how to finish these projects or how to pass them on so that somebody else can finish them so that there's more pretty quilts out in the world. And that's the whole point. So here's to simplifying <laughs> and here's to reducing the clutter. Uh, I really hope that this helps you hear my struggles. Um, I don't think anyone has this all figured out. And it's certainly something that I want to get more under control because I find that the longer I quilt, 
the more stuff I stash. And that can be a dangerous thing. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to one day be one of those hoarders buried alive under miles and miles of fabric and, and quilting supplies. I'd rather turn that stuff into beautiful quilts. That's the whole point. So uh, this week I'm filming new videos for the machine quilting block party. And we are in our uh, fourth month, you can find four different blocks that you can learn how to piece and quilt. So be checking that out. Our next block coming out in May is going to be a cool pieced block. Uh, I think you're going to really like it. It's going to be pretty intricate, but it's everything that we've done this year is beginner level. So anyone, any skill level can join in the fun and learn more about machine quilting. Now, our sponsor for this week is the Waterfall Bargello Workshop that you can find at my website at leahday.com slash waterfall. And this week you can save $7 on this workshop. And it is an online workshop where you watch the videos online and you can download a PDF learning guide, which will have the quilt pattern plus lots of details and links to all of the videos. So it's really easy to watch the videos. Uh, you can also download them onto your computer and watch them anytime you want. So check that out at leahday.com slash waterfall and make sure to check the show notes of this episode so you can see Maggie's version of this waterfall quilt. She made a rainbow waterfall and it is gorgeous. So she inspired us to put it on a little sale and to show off her beautiful quilt. I really appreciate that. If you make a version of the waterfall quilt and you want to show it off, please send me a picture. I love showing off all of the beautiful quilts that get created from our workshops and of course the block party, all of those different things. It just makes me feel like I'm being a good teacher when uh, someone sends me a photo and has made the quilt. You know, that's really exciting. That's like, that's like the best day ever. <laughs> it really is. So check that out. And now here's the show. Hello, my quilting friends. Today I'm here with Jackie Kunkel from Canton Village Quilt Works. She is the author of Splash of Color, a rainbow of brilliant black and white quilts. She is the teacher of two craftsy classes. She designs fabric for Island Boutique and teaches classes around the country. And she has a quilting cruise coming up in 2018. Wow, that is a lot of different things that you do. Welcome to the show, Jackie. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, so let's just get started off with how you got into quilting in the first place. Well, it's kind of an interesting little story, to be honest with you. Um, prior to, I, I've actually been quilting pretty much, well, sewing, I should say, pretty much my entire life. I started in sixth grade home economics, which I absolutely loved. And half the year was sewing and half the year was cooking. And I don't do that anymore. In, in high school, because my kids, when they went to high school, they got like three weeks, and there was a little bit of sewing stuck in there and a little bit of cooking, but, um, so I've been like a garment sewer pretty much all my life, but I did the very first sewing project I ever did was in sixth grade, um, home economics, and it was a patchwork pillow, which I still own. I still have it. Which is so then fast forward up to, um, about 1993, I was working full time as a vocational rehab counselor, and I was pregnant with my first child. And I broke out the sewing machine and I started making baby clothes. <laughs> and we had we had agreed, my husband and I, that I would stay home from you know I wouldn't go back to work and I would stay home and because we wanted to raise a family. And so my husband said, "Don't you think you might want to get a hobby?" And I'm like. I looked at him and I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, you might get bored staying home with the kids, don't you think? And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be so tired. But <laughs> I said, okay. So I, because I knew I loved sewing, I went and I took a quilting class, which I hated. <laughs> I hated it because the teacher just taught, um, like, the old, the old school method with the scissors and cutting out the cardboard templates and then tracing them and using as scissors and I kept saying I know there's something quicker out there and I kept making the motion like of the a pizza cutter I didn't know what what it was like a, it was a rotary cutter and she's like we're not talking about that she completely shut me down and I said okay so that project needless to say never got finished um but I persevered and I went to a real quilt shop I had taken the first 
book class at a chain store uh, um, at the time. It was, I don't know if where you live you had um, House of Fabrics or Sofro Fabrics. Um, and they're, I, they're no longer in existence, I believe. But anyway, then I went and I took a class at a quilting sh- a quilt shop. And I fell in love because it was Eleanor Burns quilt in a day, strip piecing. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm talking about because I need speed. I've got two small little kids who are really close in age and I need speed. So um, it kind of just, my husband kind of got me into it in the, you know, kind of a backwards kind of way. I don't know that he was thinking he was going to do that, but then, um, so I just kind of, quilted on my own and I joined Quilt Guild and um, then fast forward from there to 2000 I I purchased uh, my friend's she was moving she was my long arm quilter and I she said she would sell me her long arm so I started my business way back in 2000 so this will be my 17th year in business yeah wow (laughs) so um which was really kind of cool. So I started off quilting for customers and um, that's what I did mainly because it was able, it allowed me to stay at home and work while my kids were in school. And when they came home, I was off. I didn't work. And, and then as they got older, I started re, kind of reinventing the wheel, kind of like we all have to do in this industry, I think. You know, I started, um, I, put my business online when the internet really became bigger I put it online and I started garnering customers from there and then I started designing quilts for magazines and um, I became a certified Judy Niemeyer instructor Um, I had been following her back since the late 1990s and I had been making her patterns and wanted to to, uh, really teach her method of paper piecing so I started that and then um from there I went to designing uh well I did crafty two crafty classes and now I'm doing uh fabric for Island Boutique and my own pattern line and I'm doing a, a quilting cruise actually this year and next year I'm doing one in April coming up in a month I'm looking forward to that it'll be my first one <laughs> But I travel all over teaching, and I do, you know, guilds, trunk shows, you know, guilds with trunk shows, quilt shops, whichever. So, phew, that was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> but that, that's kind of, you know. How it evolved. No, that's fascinating. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Like, how how did you turn it into a business? And um, when you bought that long arm uh, from your friend, was it with the intention, like, hey, I'm going to start quilting for other people? You know, it was interesting. Um, initially, <laughs> I bought it because I'm like, oh, wow, I can quilt my own quilts now, right? And and then I thought about it. And my head, it's funny because at the time I bought it, my husband and I were having that discussion. The kids were now both in school. One was in kindergarten and one was in first grade. And he had said, you know, are you, do you think you'll go back to work? In you know, the, what I had gotten my my two degrees in and I says well no I don't think so because I you know the kids still have all those breaks and stuff and we either have to we didn't live near family at the time so um, I didn't have any real daycare options other than to put him into a traditional daycare thing so I bought it with the the expectation that I'm going to start doing my quilts and then I'm going to move into quilting customer quilts and so it took me a few months to get used to the machine and quilting my own stuff and then I quickly moved into the customer quilt so it worked it 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 totally evolved into that and it was perfect it was perfect yeah it sounds like it I I have a third grader and I you know like next week he's out of school all next week for spring break it's like you know what do I do If, if I didn't work at home with Josh and you know I don't know what we would do uh, constantly having the breaks here and there and the days out of school or half days and stuff like that. And it does, gives you a really good amount of flexibility. You do end up working more days of the week though. You just might work shorter hours. Did that, is that what you found? Yeah, I did find that, you know, because you work out of your house. And I think anybody who probably works out of their home finds that work is always there. 
and when I say, and it's funny because um, when I say, I mean, I, I love what I do and I still think of it as my hobby and I'm so lucky that I get to make my hobby my work, you know, and a lot of people can't say that of what they do. They like, they go into work and it's work. I don't necessarily consider what I do work because I get to do something I love every single day. And, um, my kids, um, once asked my husband, we were sitting at the dinner table and my son said, he, he actually asked me and he's like, mom, he says, you know, you work an awful lot. And my husband said to him, well, well, no, she doesn't really work. And I said, I looked at my husband like, what? And he says, no, let me put this in perspective. He says, when you do something that you love, you never work another day in your life. So although my work is here, and yeah, I may quilt every single day or do something quilt related, whether it's on the computer or whatever, you know, it is, you almost don't have days off per se. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. And never, you do it and, anyway, you know? And you don't resent it because you love doing it. Exactly, exactly. So it's very, it's very different than going into the office and saying, God, I got to go to work again. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever say that. God, I've got a quilt again. Hmm. <laughs> absolutely. So tell me about becoming a certified Judy Niemeyer instructor. How does that work? Uh, I, I really know very little about that. How how those types of systems work, and then how you um, like the kind of the benefits of it. So kind of break that down. So becoming a certified Judy Meyer instructor was really a, kind of a highlight for me, just because I love her technique and her designs. And there's not there really out there on the market. There's I mean her designs are you know there's not really any like them out there, and um, I I first started following her and her design process um, back in the late 90s. And it was partly because I was introduced to it. We had taken a trip up to Montana, which is where she's, which is where she was. And I visited a quilt shop there. And I saw these beautiful, stunning quilts. And I thought, I want to make one like that. And then I bought a pattern and it had her name on it. And I just kind of started seeing her patterns and picked it up and, um, but part of becoming a, a certified instructor, you there's a whole process, and she has it on her website. Like she's changed it; she's kind of um, changed it a little bit on the, along the line. I was in the second round back. I forget when it was, how many years I've been doing it, but I was in the second round of certified instructors that she ever had, and and now the, um, she's changed the process up a little bit for new new people, but part of what goes into it is you've had to have made so many of her quilts have had to take in so many classes with her so she can know you personally. And you've also had to go up to Montana to her retreats. I think I'm not sure what the requirement is now, but I know that at the time for me, it was at least two times and I had taken multiple classes with her too. So she knew me by the time I went to Montana, she knew me. Um, and that you've also had to have been teaching, like in quilt shops, just regular, you know, quilting classes and, and had recommendations from um, quilt shop owners and other teachers that you were a good teacher, that you could, you know, handle a classroom and you would be able to teach the method well. Because I think I think their primary um, goal was, at the time, Judy was being requested by so many places and she just could not keep up with the travel and she wanted to do more of the design work and kind of be home. And that was, I think the, the catalyst for her launching this certified instructor program is to get people who were like-minded with her. And it would be like, um, so when I go into a classroom, it would be kind of like I'm teaching as if she were there. So I'm teaching it the way she wants to be taught or, or she wants it to be taught to others. Because, you know, in, in real, reality, I mean, you know, any patterns that, like, you do or I do, anybody can teach them. They can pick it up and they can go teach them if they want to. Um, but it may not be the way you teach or the way I teach or the way we would want them taught, but they would get taught, and that's fine. 
Um, and anybody can do the same with a Judy Niemeyer pattern as well, but they may not necessarily teach that method in the way it's meant to be taught. Um, and that's why certified instructors are pretty highly sought after, I think. Um, and now, I mean, people know across the board, quilt shops, quilt, uh, quilt guilds know that um, if they hire a certified instructor, they're going to get pretty much what Judy would be doing. So, Yeah, that totally makes sense. And, you know, certainly the idea of, um, I guess, kind of multiplying yourself or cloning yourself. I'm always saying, like, I wish I could clone myself and then I get so much more done. Uh, you know, I can completely understand that. And uh, coming from you, you just really love her design aesthetic and you love her quilts. And then um, how many have you ended up making of her quilts? <laughs> um, hmm. It's a good question. I would have to, I, I haven't actually counted. <laughs> so you would say dozens? <laughs> Oh yeah, um, and uh, in the pro right now, it's one of the one of the unique features of her program too is that she's developed this technique of the month. Uh, every two years, she puts out a technique of the month, and currently there are four. Um, so, Judy Niemeyer followers um, always look forward to every year the new or every, every two years the new technique of the month. The Glacier Star is out with the first one, and then Mariner's Compass and Paradise and Blooms and now the Vintage Rose is um, the newest one. And that is a certified instructor program slash certified shop program exclusively. Nobody can buy those patterns without getting them from a certified instructor or t taking a class or a certified shop. So Judy doesn't even teach or sell those. So that's how she also... Um, kind of, I don't know what the word is, maybe protects that in certified instructor program. Uh, there's something that, because if somebody picked up just one of her regular patterns, that, like I said, they could teach it if they wanted to, but they cannot teach a technique of the month. Cool. Um, so we have to, you know, go up to Montana and take the training on the new program and, um, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. And I'm in the process of finishing mine up because as you know, you know, like working with the fabric companies, you have the deadlines. So I went up in September to do the technique of the month and learn the vintage rose. And then the progression on putting that together got stopped when I had the deadlines for Island Batik. Yes. <laughs> I, had to finish up, I had to finish up all my designs for Island Batik and get them into them by their deadline, and then I started picking this back up. So now, then, but I knew that ahead of time, so I didn't schedule any classes. <laughs> Good, yeah. So since that led straight into Island Boutique, tell me about designing for them. I love your fabric collection that I saw at Fall Market. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm having a lot of fun with Island Boutique. Um, I, as an online quilt shop, when I was a full fledged online quilt shop. Um, when I lived back in Connecticut and I sold, I had 2,500 bolts of fabric in my house, believe it or not. <laughs> Whoa. But batiks were a big portion of them because I just love batiks and I love working with them. Um, not that I don't love other fabrics because I do. I have, I have, you know, but item batik was a, a huge part of the batik section in my online shop. And, you know, um, I, so I started doing a few designs for them. And then they took me on as one of their um, designers for their signature collections. And um, I just, I, I'm really enjoying it. And I, the, and, and I guess I could, should explain, and, and I, I'm sure, as you know, the differences between the signature collections and the designer collections. So they, so the signature collections, so the ones that I had out in the fall market and the one have coming out in the spring and then have another one in the fall again, those are designs that Kathy Engel makes, and then we get to choose as designers, and they get to be exclusively ours, so we get to look at them, and, and, and they get to be exclusively ours, and we design our patterns and a pattern line around them, um, which I've had immense fun doing. And then they did ask me um, to design my own line for fall of 2018, which I did, and I'm so, I can't wait to... <laughs> I'm supposed to be getting, I think the 
strike-offs or the swatches this April, but it's two hour, or two years in advance that you start working on these. And it was really fun designing the chops and, and the colorations, and I can't wait to see what it actually looks like. So I will actually have my own um, line coming out too, which I'm super excited about. And they've been fab. Island Boutique is just phenomenal uh, uh, to work with. So I completely agree. I think they're such an excellent company. And um, did you start with the, um, uh, I think it's Ambassadors Program? No, actually I didn't. I, um, I, they had asked me to design a few patterns. So going back way to 2012, actually, I designed a quilt. Actually, I designed a couple in my pattern line. Um, one actually made the cover of Quilt Magazine. Um, it's my Island Breeze pattern, which is actually the one I'm teaching on my cruise in April. And um, that was all done in Island Batik fabrics. And then they asked me, um, they had sent um, an email. I can't even remember. Now. I, still, I don't have a quilt back yet, but it was... I want to say it must have been 2016 or the end of 2015 or somewhere in there. Um, they had asked for a design for uh, a line, and um, I designed a quilt for a line of fabrics. And after that, they met with me at market, and they said, you know, we we would like it. You know, if you're interested, we'd like you to come on as one of the design. I was like, absolutely, I would love to. And they've been, fa- they've really been fabulous. I mean, any questions that I have, they answer. They just are really fun to work with and really personable. And I can't say enough about it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you also did some a thread collection too. Who did you do the thread collection with? Arthur. And they're another fun company to work with. <laughs> so... And um, how long did that one, I, we're talking about lead times here. You said two years to do the, the fabric line that you were designing yourself. How long did you have to have lead time for RFL? So, well, for the, so the, for the signature collection that I'm doing, um, well, like, so for, for example, the fall one, that ju- it actually is just getting delivered to stores now, my fresh, fresh catch collection, which is, oranges and greens and some rust colors and stuff. Um, the Island Boutique, I want to say, is probably one of the fewer companies that gives you a, a really nice lead time for designs, uh, for quilt designs, I should say. Um, so, so for instance, um, I've, I'm doing another fall one this fall, so I picked my um, fabrics for that, and I picked them at Quilt Market in, in the 2016, fall. Fall, yeah. fall of 2016. So I picked them then. I just got the digital swatches uh, a couple couple weeks ago, I think, and designed the quilts. When I got the digital swatches, I, I went and, and did my designs for the quilts, submitted the the um, quilt designs for the yardages and I believe the yardages will come so the my swatches um, came in the digital swatches I designed the quilts around those and um, the fabric is going to be coming in I believe in March so I have from March until I think almost mid June to get all those quilts made to go into photography. And this is still for fall market. So there's a big, there's a, a nice big timeline there to, by the time, you know, they send you your fabric until the time they need it and then until it gets to fall market. And then you have time to write your patterns up and get them printed so that they have them, which is really fantastic. And I know I have other friends that design fabrics um, for companies and their lead time is really teeny tiny. They usually get the fabric like a month before quilt market. Whoa. (laughs) So there are friends of mine who design fabrics for other companies, and they have a really teeny tiny window of time to um, get those quilts made for quilt market. Usually it's like about a month or maybe a little more, but not much. And, you know, they're talking about making five quilts. 
in, you know, in a short period of time. So Island Boutique is really generous with the timeline. And I, I have to say, I can't complain about that at all. I love that. And it gives me time to plan out too, because you know how busy you can get, especially if you have kids, you just don't know how. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that that's what I want to talk about too, is um, how do you, you know, how do you balance all of this? Because you're also traveling and teaching too. And so you're also designing and teaching and, uh, you know, and it's, for me at least, it's hard to really be adventurous and try new things when I'm too busy. So how do you keep it fresh, you know, and keep challenging yourself to try new things? I like the word challenge because um, I like a good challenge and I find that um, I, I can rise to the occasion when I'm challenged. Um, if things get too ho hum, you you kind of you know you get in this kind of you know I don't know not rut really but it, it it's not as um, exciting I think in a way um, so as far as managing it I have to make sure everything's written on a calendar everything everything not one exception. It's got to be on a calendar. If it's not on a calendar, I don't know what I'm doing because I don't want to schedule too many things. And I have to make sure that I have blocks of time where I am home so that I can do that creating part. Because um, when I'm traveling, I can't do the creating part. So it's just not as easy there. So, um, so that's the key thing is making sure you're organized and having it written on a calendar. Absolutely. And I do make lists for myself too. In fact, I did this morning, I'm like, okay, I need to get this, 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 and this accomplished before the end of this week. So I have to give myself goals. Um, and if I if I don't do that, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. I have, you know, you know. So you have to do do that to kind of keep your sanity. If you don't do that, you know, all bets are off. And I always, I always, it's funny because I am my own admin assistant and I always make a joke saying, sometimes I need to fire that admin assistant <laughs> because <laughs> I've scheduled, sometimes I'll find myself that I've scheduled too many things in for one time and it's like, who did that? <laughs> I, gotta, I need to fire that woman. <laughs> So do you say no a lot? You know, are you, are you getting, you know, when you get an, uh, an offer to go teach somewhere and you know that you're going to need to be designing during that time, you just say no and, and no, no emotion with it. Just let it go. Um, it's not always saying no, um, per se. It's, it's saying, you know, I, I am, I have something on the calendar for then. Let's see if we can shoot for another time. Let's see what works for both of us. So rather than say, you know, rather than saying no, because if it's something that, you know, truly I want to be doing and, you know, out there teaching or promoting or whatever, there's always a way to find a, a, a compromise. And so, yeah, there are some times where you might have to say no, but by and large, um, it's more like I'm booked at that time. Let's let's you know, regroup and find something that's, that'll work for both of us. Shifting it outward. That make totally makes sense. Right. And, and having your business now 17 years old, you've obviously been around long enough to see the quilting world change. So oh, yeah. what's your perspective on that? And, and what has changed trend wise in the quilting world? And then what do you see coming? Well, it's funny because, you know, having quilted for so long, um, and then been in my business and all, um, First and foremost, you see the fabrics have changed immensely. Because when I started quilting back in 1993, you know, there wasn't nearly the types of fabrics that we have now. Um, much more beautiful, vibrant fabrics and a, and a lo much larger selection. So fabrics is probably the most visible change, per se. Um, and then I would say, you know, as of recently, like in... It, you know, within maybe the past 10 years, the big up, uptick in the modern quilting movement, um, where there's a lot more uh, younger people coming into the quilting world because it's become this craft 
not just your mother's or grandmother's kind of thing. And it's fabulous to watch it grow and um, just watch all the new fresh ideas coming out. Um, So I, I would say that those are the two real biggest things. I mean, otherwise, I mean, you've got the whole long arm quilting has taken on taken stage. I remember when I started doing it, people were like, well, that's not quilting. You know, when I started that, that's not quilting because it's on a machine. Unless you hand quilt, it's not quilting. And then it became, you know, and even in the show, in the show arena, you know, where they were, people were showing quilts it was still frowned upon if they were machine quilted, you know, they had to be hand quilted. And now, wow, you can see how that's changed. Right. I mean, you've got all the machine quilting, quilting shows dedicated to that. And then now you have the machine quilting categories, the long arm, the domestic, the sit down, you know, you've got all these different categories and machine quilting, as you know, I mean, cause you, you are a, a forerunner in this whole, whole uh segment too machine quilting has a new life i mean it is genuinely quilting so what it's by machine but yeah it's quicker than hand quilting but look at the results you can garner from machine quilting beautiful results and so now it has become this accepted form of quilting which wasn't accepted when i started well they wasn't it was it was okay but you know people weren't accepting of it as much and now it is so there's there's a lot of shifts I think and I think it's all you know how everybody evolves and I've always said as part of my business if I want to stay in business and I think it's for any kind of business not just quilting um, if you want to stay in business you have to to constantly uh, rethink yourself and and evolve and evolve with how things change. And if you can't do that, then you're going to be falling off that spectrum and you're, you're not going to be in there. So you have to constantly rethink and, and, and change yourself and evolve with how things are changing. Um, and how things are going to go in the future, that's a good question. Um, I, it, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but I want to be part of it, and I want—I can't wait to see what's ha- what's what's going on. I know for me, what strikes my fancy, and we'll see what everybody else is up to. So I'm not sure what's to come. Yeah, and and do you have quilts that you make that are like, this is super special. This is something different. And do you prioritize those, or is it? Is all of it kind of, uh, I love quilting and all of it's the same. Like, do you ever have a project that you prioritize over others? Uh, deadlines usually get prioritized over top of the others. Um, there are things that um, sometimes, like I have in my head or I've done like a little piece and I'm like, you know, I really want to expand upon this um, and go with it. But then sometimes that deadline kicks in first. So... Sometimes for me, at this point in my in my quilting career, deadlines take a precedence over other things that I might want to expand upon. But I eventually get there. It may take a little longer <laughs> to do than you know, but I eventually get there. Yes. So I mean, but there there are so many there are so many people in this quilting world to that we we can watch and admire and, and, and grow with them and, and, and learn from, I, I mean, I, I suggest to everybody to, that's in quilting to, to do what they can, learn a new technique, go, go to people like you, like me, like, you know, all these other people that have knowledge and learn from them. Yeah, absolutely. And the more we share, the the better we get, you know, and the, the, the more we have to share, I guess if that makes sense. The more we share, the more we have to share. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I love it. Uh, I, I feel like quilting is the one craft that will never end because there's always something new to make. 
Yeah, right. it's wonderful right. that way. So I always ask this question at the end, and that is, what are you looking for to most in the next five years? This could be business, personal, just, you know, as as our businesses change and evolve, we have these things that we are sometimes like, oh, I can't wait for that to happen. So what is that thing for you? Um, oh, well, I, can't, I know I can't wait for my own little collection to come out in the fall of 2018. That's most you know, right there in the forefront of my brain. Um, and I, I, I have things in, I, and ideas in my head right now that I'm starting to put into motion, um, which I really can't touch upon because they're just starting in those little phases. I have somebody helping me out with them. And so I can't wait until to do that um, and, and get those going and see how it goes. Um, but... Most of all, I, you know, aside from quilting, I really, I, I look forward to, to spending time. One of the reasons we moved to Arizona, too, was my, my parents live here. So spending time with my, my parents. Um, I, cause I, for the longest time, I had not lived near my parents, and now we are. So spending time with my parents and my, my husband and um, just enjoying everything kind of enjoying like everything the quilting and just you know yeah uh, your whole life sounds like it's come together in like this perfect perfect place that's so wonderful so I don't know that perfect but well you know. as, as great as it can be <laughs> oh, wonderful well tell everybody where they can find you online so they can follow you absolutely um they can access me at cv be like victor cvquiltworks.com and they can access all my social media sites from there Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube you name it, they're there my blog is there, everything's there um, and they, you know, schedule patterns, you name it everything is in one convenient little site and um, so that's where they can get me Excellent. Well, definitely check out Jackie's website and thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks, Leah. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. You can find links to all of the podcasts we've shared so far at leahday.com slash podcast. You can check out the show notes as well for each designer and learn more about them. Until next time, let's go quilt. 